How's it going, ladies and bruises? I'm Bobby Six Killer. Welcome to the full release of Birth Me Code. Now, uh, it's actually six days until the release date, but uh, I was lucky enough to get a copy, a press copy, early, uh, because the uh, developer is super awesome. Actually, the whole community is super awesome, and I will link um, the developer's Discord server in the description below if you want to go check them out, because they're a great bunch of people over there. Um, fortunately enough, we're able to start off from where the demo left off so this will be technically episode two um i do have an embargo that i have to adhere to so there's only a certain amount we can play to up until the release date and after that we can finish it off so let's just jump on in where we were at i don't remember if i gave everyone voices or not sorry for that i'm sure you don't like to be called animals yet none of you could pass for actual human beings <laughs> At the very least, congratulations in order, are in order. Congratulations, you made it out. At least, I'm hoping all nine of you made it out. As a price for managing to get out, I'll be generous. The door in front of you will be rendered accessible, or at least the panel next to it will be. Please take your time solving the puzzle on it while exchanging pleasantries between fellow criminals. <laughs> oh, did I not make that clear before? Allow me to rectify that then. All of you are backstabbers of the highest order. Criminals, scum. Animals. You let instincts drive over reason. You commit crimes like they are nothing. In particular, you all have one special crime you hold dear to your heart. Don't let anyone find out, or maybe they'll distrust you. Maybe they'll kill you. But first, one thing at a time. By unlocking this door, you'll gain access to the crossroads. That which originally was in the middle of your beloved school is now where you'll coldly well, you'll coldly murder each other. Don't be late now. I'll see you later. <laughs> cool. Me vanish once more. The group took a few seconds to calm down since the recording had been disorienting due to the fact that it was shown directly in their helmets. We already introduced ourselves to each other, so after you two, we'll go do the introductions back at you. We'll do the... <laughs> Avarita step forward. Point to get the two girls who escaped last. Wait a second. Both our teams had three people in them. What about yours? Um, it's the third one. She, Luxuria, held her helmet, visibly shaking at the mere thought of what she was trying to say. Gula stepped forward to take over. Deepest apologies. She is very reserved. If your strengths fail you, I am capable of uttering our companion's ultimate fate in your stead. No, it's fine. I'll, I'll tell them. Our room was hard, and she she guessed wrong. Interesting. So that's what's happened with them. The third girl guessed wrong. Luxuria pushed her back to a wall and slid down to the ground, holding her legs in a fetal position. An awkward silence lingered on the group, only interrupted by her sniffling a tad. At that moment, Gula cleared her throat. I'm assuming your wanton gazes are fixated on me, my being at the moment. I am unfortunately acutely aware my physique is unsuitably dressed for societal purposes. She glanced over at Luxuria, who either didn't notice or paid it no mind. She seemed envious of that hoodie. I can assure you this, spotty article was not in any way my own doing. Whoever incarcerated us must be finding some sort of wicked enjoyment out of it. Admittedly, I didn't touch their clothing at, at all, so that's false. Also, as it is apparent, I can witness you are all adorned of a helmet, much like hers and mine. Yeah. The sooner it's off, the better off I'll be. Naturally. Who wouldn't hold any desire to don their cranium with such an aberration? Not only is its appearance grotesque, but it's also completely unwieldy. Following that, the introductions began anew. This time it included the pair who had just come out. And Cora didn't feel like talking to either of them, since her mind was on the entire, entirely on the puzzle they had to solve. Well, that she had to solve, really. Yeah, it's probably on a few of their minds, too. The puzzle's fairly important to get past, like my avatar said, but... I can wait a little bit. The blonde girl hesitated for a few seconds, but she ultimately decided not to bother with the puzzle for now. Meeting with the two newcomers would allow her to learn important information about them. And Cora. 
Um, we'll do Gula first, and like sure he is like having a cry. Gulu is hanging out a bit further away from the others. Upon seeing the girl approach her, she faced Ankur and began talking without hesitation. Yes, greetings. I am Gula. I've obviously been christened something more palatable, but that is a nickname, I suppose. No uninspired comments on my outfit if you value your security. Oh, I wasn't going to. I'm Ankura. At least, that's what we figured out. Ankura. That is strange for a name as well. Upon further thinking, our third party also neglected to properly show an interest in elaborating upon her designation. Why do you talk like that? Are you a robot? So, she didn't introduce herself. Quite. You have a very flowery speech pattern. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> do I? <laughs> It's contemporarily second nature to me, so forgive me should my terms become obnoxious. I just didn't expect that from your looks. Gula snickered off a laugh that had nothing fancy to it. Judging one by their appearance ought to be a fatal mistake in this place. Superbia happened to hear her and she approached, <coughs> sorry, and she approached the duo while holding her hip in a condescending way. You think so? Appearances are everything, especially for someone like me. My family's rich and I could buy this school and everyone in it if I wanted. Enough of that vanity. What about your earthly label? My name? It is Superbia. Perhaps you all aren't aware of it, but it contains Superb, which is my default. Is that why you always act like such a bitch? Superbia flipped the bird without hesitation. You can't change who you are. I'm not a bitch, I just know I'm better than you lot. If there weren't people like me in this world, you'd all still be wallowing in mud. Your behaviour is appalling. Quite frankly, I should be flabbergasted should your demise be delayed by any other death. Yeah, me too. The fuck are you even saying? She says you should die first. <laughs> I think she says if you aren't the next one to die, she's going to be very surprised. We'll see who's dying next soon enough. I agree. The group of three dispersed, following these words, leaving Ankora alone to her thoughts. I can't believe nobody's thinking about the puzzle. This is all well and good, but... Is there... you know... Are they gonna keep talking while ignoring the main pressing matter? It's... Ch Chastidia... This and Superbia... Th that and Luxuria... This... Why can't we have better, shorter nicknames? Those are much easier to remember. I like the name Lux, too. Maybe we can make up smaller, cuter nicknames. Ankura was already no longer listening to them. Instead, she stood in front of the puzzle, having decided to solve that while they were talking about nicknames. <laughs> there was a sense of urgency nobody else was acknowledging. The six hours? Maybe it was just their way of coping with it. Or not coping with it. They're distracting each other, trying to find the chink in their peer's armor. Something feels wrong with all of this, too. This door wasn't supposed to be locked in this way. This feels like my friend is testing me, but they don't know about what's happening here. Was I duped? Or is someone else duping me, perhaps? I know for a fact that there is a traitor in this group. The entire reason why this is being held is to find out the traitor, because they all shouldn't know Pandora's real identity. My real identity. One of them knows, though. Is it Superbia? NVIDIA? Gula? Luxuria? Avarita? Tristitia? Or maybe Ira? Of course, I already know who Pandora is. It's because I'm Pandora. But what if the traitor died already? Could I be so lucky? Till I find proof, I'll assume it's one of those still alive. And make sure they pay, even if I have to kill six of them. Getting serious, huh? Solve the puzzle? Oh no. Alright, I'm ready. What? Imprison within me. Hint? Only two letters are important in this one. Okay. Imprison within me. I can get another hint over here. Don't worry over the leftover letters. Hmm. 
Yeah, we got it. I just put me's everywhere. <laughs> awesome. All right. Okay, that was uh, difficult for me, I must admit, but uh, we'll get the hang of it. We will get the hang of it. <laughs> As the puzzle was solved, a small click was heard from the double doors. Cora d decided to go forward on her own, huh? Sorry, but we don't have a lot of time, so I thought... I believe the better idea constitutes proper thanks for opening the aperture leading to our destination. No problem, Gula. Ah, precisely about that. We have finished constructing a secondary nickname to better communicate between ourselves. I proposed Ula for mine, and it was unanimously accepted as my new designation. D don't be ridiculous. Nobody would oppose that kind of thing. Viddy works for me, so I'm going to go with that. And I'm Trist now. With a shorter and better. I agree. Judging by your shape, you would have just <laughs> it should have just been tit beer for me. Right back at you, Biarch. <laughs> As a second nature to her, Superbia flipped the bird. I already said Lux earlier. I think it sounds cute. No nickname here. You're a short already. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, short for irrelevant. <laughs> Era's fist closed tighter. Superbia wasn't making any friends so far. Uh, I guess you guys picked Cora for me then. Any objections? Not really, it's fine too. My nickname will be Ava from now on. What are we waiting for? Let's go to the crossroads. Okay. With the doors unlocked, the group could enter the crossroads. In reality, it didn't look like much. The side hallways were just long enough to access some bathrooms, and half of both sides of the lounging spots surrounded the elevated, elevated middle area. Metal plates blocked any attempt to go further down either hall. There were two staircases going up higher into the middle of the crossroads. From afar, the eight of them could see there was a large black wall in place there, but not much else. Everything else was normal. Benches were scattered around, the structure was normal. Except for the metal plates covering large parts of broken walls and ceilings, as well as the debris laying around. Everything was normal. A loud clank echoed from behind. Superbia fell down onto her ass, screaming some profanities. You okay? Interesting that he'd be the one to ask, given how Superbia treated him just before. Either way, there can't be any harm checking up on them. Maybe. <laughs> Looking around, Ankura noticed Luxuria wasn't staring at the happenings, but at her instead. Not too far off, Nvidia had his arms crossed, deep in thought. Presented with those options, Ankura... Uh, let's talk with Luxuria, she seems nice. The others uneasily stared at the event, unwilling to lend a hand. Ankura was in much of the same boat, and so was Luxuria right next to her. I think she hid her rabbit ears on the doorframe. Sounds bad. I guess she'll have to be careful due to her height. It's not a problem for us, huh? That makes me think. Your helmet is strange. Huh? In what way? It's the same helmet that the girl who died had. Is there supposed to be two bear helmets? Maybe it wasn't a bear. Plus, there are many types of bears. Right, maybe a panda helmet. Speaking of which, Panda. Panda. She thought about it for a few moments. Ankara was also thinking about it. A panda helmet? They were all grey, so there was no way to differentiate them. Remember that list of names and how there was Pandora on it, too? That was the ninth name. So you're telling me Pandora is the one who died? Do you think so? Maybe. I don't know now, but maybe. By this point, Superbia had recovered and joined them all. Interrupted in their talk, Ankura and Luxuria moved alongside the group again. Once Superbia had rejoined the group, the helmet shut down. I wonder if that affects the storyline, just that choice to talk to Luxuria. Probably does. But now everyone was getting used to this. It meant me was going to talk to them again. This feels extremely slow, but it's all necessary information. I have to communicate to them. Thankfully, I only have to do all of this once. Greetings once more. Make absolutely sure all of you listen closely because this recording is the most important recording you will hear in what's left of your life. Remember, kill me. 
the game we're playing, in which you have to kill me. I've decided to leave you a way to decide who gets to die. You know, like a democracy. To vote, it's really easy. You just need one of those keycards, one per person. Be sure to keep those keycards after you vote, because you'll need them later. From now on, I will refer to those as me cards. At this moment, you should have six in your possession, but you'll need nine to operate the consoles for the first time, and you must use up to up 39, which you can find in this school, or what remains of it anyway. To round out your amount to nine, you'll have to search around a little. For each subsequent round, you'll need as many me cards as there are survivors. For example, if four of you die, you'll need five me cards. Of course, you could just kill each other without getting the me cards, but you still need to discard 39 of them within the middle of the voting apparatus or everyone surrenders their right to live. You'll be allowed to leave once all 39 me cards are discarded, provided you already killed me. Let's recapitulate, shall we? 1. Get those 39 me cards. 2. Kill each other by voting and discarding the me cards in the middle. 3. You're free to go when you've done that and if you've killed me. No matter what you do, you absolutely must have at least two voting sessions. They are required, as they will unlock the next two sectors in which the, there are the other me cards, okay? Oh, one last thing. In the event that someone miraculously dies, a vote will be skipped. That's right, each death removes the need to have a vote for the hour, which is fantastic for the three among you who won't need to surrender your right to live. Otherwise, if no one died by the end of each hour slice, everyone surrenders their right to live. Do you all understand this? Not exactly, but we'll figure it out. Instant kaboom for everyone. I'll see you later. Wow, this is a little awkward now. What do you mean by kaboom? Some of us will die and some of us will live. If we fail, there might be a bomb somewhere to blow this place sky high. Are you sure we should just... Do what this me person says? Like, fuck him, right? <laughs> we should just try and figure out who the mastermind is, as soon as possible. Luxuria, Gula, Tresidia, Avarita, Era, Invidia, Superbia. These are all the old ways to refer to the seven deadly sins. I don't know what Nankora is, though. It doesn't really mean anything, because... It could easily have just been because Pandora ran out of sins to name us after. Tresidia paused. As though he had just interrupted himself by saying saying something. Something also bothers me. Someone died. So is our limit extended by to two hours? And should we determine who died too? Your nickname and mine too. All of these strange names are familiar. We're all part of my emptiness, aren't we? That's what we had to figure out. The mood turned even colder as Nvidia explained his thought. According to the list of names we found in our room, which I heard others found too, my emptiness is composed is composed of nine members. It's a group that I recall vaguely, and all of you should too, because all your names appear on that list. In short, we're not just part of it, we are my emptiness. Oh, yeah, I know about that. You're all part of that? Sounds very dangerous. So what if we were part of it? Your name is on there too. Don't try to sass us, little girl. I wasn't trying to do that, Ava, I swear. I just didn't know this was the group I joined. It was advertised as being a group where you could make all your secret dreams come true. Boldly lied, Lux. The truth is that you're part of it too, and denying it won't change that fact. She's not wrong. To make it in, you have to be someone very unscrupulous. Anyway, from what I'm seeing here, I wasn't the only one who didn't know who else was in it. Pandora always gave us tasks separately, huh? Pandora is the leader's name, right? I remember that much. He or she purposefully left us all in the dark. It's ironic because without the goggles inside of the helmets, they would literally not see a thing. I didn't know about all your nicknames, even if I didn't know what you looked like. It's that list on the website, huh? I made it myself. If it's the one on thesinemptiness.com. And Cora wasn't added yet when I last remembered updating the website. Huh? And why would she not be added to the list yet? Because I was the last one who came in. I've been in my emptiness for a week, I think. Interestingly enough, 
That means out of all of us, you're probably the only one without a crime. Huh. Unless you did something in that week. Who knows? It's probably best not to dwell on the crimes just yet. At least we've established where we all stand now. So all eight of us can go on. Hold up, cowboy. Something doesn't add up. With Cora, the list of names is nine long. Is there a problem with that? We were nine just now, weren't we? Yes, we were nine. Who died? Um, she never said her name. All of them looked at each other in turn. The mood lifted a little. So that's it then. Pandora is already dead. I don't think it's nice to rejoice, but if she's gone, then we won. No, I don't think so. The one who died is definitely an innocent. Innocent of the crimes of being Pandora, at least. What makes you say all of that, that all of a sudden? Would the mastermind behind all of this go through all this trouble and just let themselves die? I don't think it's going to be that easy. To their own trap, no less. No, I wouldn't imagine. Sounds more like a trap to me. I think the most likely outcome is that Pandora is one of us who assumed someone else's name. You can't remember much about yourselves, right? So that's it. Pandora is still among us. Luxuria and Gula looked at each other. The mood fell again. A longer silence installing itself among them all. The primary reason was simple. They once again didn't know who they could trust. So what then? The one who died already might still be Pandora? Big deal. Let's just spend the me cards and leave. We already won. Nvidia lifted a finger to call on silence again. However, Gula disregarded it and walked nearer to him. Her busted attire were definitely intimidating him. <laughs> I am in complete agreement. The way she talks intimidates me. I'm in complete agreement with the Lagomorph. The third participant in our beginning position never ensured her designation was known and remaining immobile serves us negatively. But Trist is right about that. Anybody else could have said that they're someone else. Have, I haven't personally met any of you in the past. It's not like I could put a name on anyone. Regardless of our conundrum, we cannot afford to remain still. However, I do agree Pandora's methods were unequivocally secretive on purpose. None has the knowledge of their appearance. So either Pandora died in the room, or someone among us is totally Pandora using someone else's name. Ever heard of Occam's Razor? It says that the most likely scenario is probably right. Since that girl died, at least we've got another hour to figure that out before we need to take a vote. Everyone seemed to be on board with that idea. And Cora felt a shiver run down his spine. Things are getting dicey. Someone needs to be made suspicious, if at least for insurance. They want to get the mastermind, but they could be used. They could be manipulated to vote for the traitor, my target. To take their minds off the business for at least a moment, Ankura called everyone over to a nearby floor plan which showed the full accessible, accessible area of the school. Hey look, at least you'll remember that what the school looks like, right? The plans are different than usual. You're right. Normally it shows the full school, but here it only shows about a quarter of it? Specifically, that's Wing A, the one with the classrooms. Do you think that means that this is the only one that's accessible at all? Let's split up and cover some ground. We have, we have to see exactly what we can reach, for now. Make sense to you? Very well. I'll take my leave with Lux. I'd like to head with Bea. I mean, it's not like we have to group up, but why would you head with her? Superbia shot him a glance. If her helmet was off, it's clear she'd be looking upon him with the greatest disgust. Whatever, I'm fine with it. Peace out, losers. Bye. <laughs> the rabbit and the lion left together for another corner of the crossroads. The horse and the pig left together as well. And Kuru was about to leave too, when Nvidia grabbed her by the wrist. Listen, just be careful. I trust you, but others might not. I feel like you might be the first targeted by the vote, so you should probably try and talk to them. Okay, but I'm really not Pandora, even if our names are similar. I don't know how much that's worth, but for some people it's much easier to lie than for others. After that, Nvidia let go of Ankura and the girl set off. She didn't go too far, still wondering about the possibilities presented to her, stopping to think about them. This is just like when I first booted this helmet. I can hack into the other helmets in order to obtain information, 
when they split up like this. By hacking their models, I can see and hear exactly what the cameras lining on their helmets see and hear as well. Ooh, that way I can gather information on, to manipulate them. Based on what I learn and, and who tr Based on what I learn and who trusts, it'll vary the options presented with each vote. That's interesting. Still, the goal of the operation is to figure out who the traitor is in the group. They might want to figure out the mastermind, but what I want them to do is to kill the traitor for me instead. One of them. One of them is a traitor to my emptiness, and they've joined it in order to sell me out. I have to figure out who it is and kill them while masquerading it as the mastermind's death. Another problem. Hacking a helmet will probably present me with a puzzle I have to solve, just like earlier. This is all thanks to you, idiot programming friend. <laughs> I guess you're a bit like passwords? Which seems fair enough. The only person who can compute this stuff fast enough among all of us is me. So it creates a barrier of entry none of the others can deal with. After I hack, my vision will be replaced with the other person's, so I have to be careful about it. Finding herself in an empty and quiet corner, and Kura sat down to rest a little. She was nervous, given that she was what she was going through. It was no wonder. I didn't have a lot of choices. They all left in groups, except groups of two, except Nvidia, and hacking someone else who's alone isn't really that interesting. I hack just about anyone I want, but I can't. There's the frequency to think about too. In order to avoid exterior interference, helmets randomly switch frequencies. If their frequency doesn't match the helmets during the moment I've got some time for it, there's nothing to do. Hacking them is impossible. At the moment, matching frequencies include Era, Avaricia, and Luxurious Helmets. For now, I'll be hacking... Mm. She went with the other... Let's go with Avaricia. She's the one I think I know the least about. Alright, we'll solve this, and then we'll, uh... We'll hopefully solve this, and then we'll have to wrap it up for this episode. We shall see. Sort. Um, how do these, can I, can they go over, oh, okay, okay. So three sets of, are we doing it in like, size? Are they size sorted, perhaps? I don't know. Let's just size sort them, I guess. Because, uh, because I can. <laughs> There you go, that's sorted. Nope. 12, 22, 32, 47, 54, 67, 74, 84, 90. So in, in, okay, let's just do the heads. Each group of three shares a specific trait. Okay, so this one all ends in twos. And then this one can all end in fours. And then that one will all end in sevens, right? I mean, does it, hang on. Let's bring this seven over. How's that? Okay, what's the second hint? Thinking numeric, think numerical, but not simply numerical. Does it matter whether the twos are here or here or here, or the fours are here or here or here? Um, maybe we sort by the last letter and then the first letter? Something like that? So it'd be like 12, 22, th and then this would be in that order, and that would be in that order. How's that? Okay, that's not too bad. I can deal with that. Though I'm better at math stuff than I am at English word stuff. <laughs> word stuff is not my specialty. Not the word stuff. I fucking hate the word stuff. Anyway. <laughs> Evaluating frequencies. Here we go. You have the me card still, don't you? I have no idea where I'll find one here. Avaricia and Tristidia were together, as expected. They were talking about the me cards their group had found. Tristidia got one of them by a deductive process. Era had the other. Yeah, I still got it. Wouldn't let go of it in a million years now that I know what it's used for. Huh, I hope so. Otherwise we won't be able to vote. Maybe the other teams will have found extras too. But I don't think we should count on the other groups. I'm not saying we can't trust them, but I don't think they'll be too much use. I wonder how the voting will work, though. 
and two of them were near the middle of the area, next to a giant black cylinder from floor to ceiling. Jacidia and Avaricia examined the material closely, with the boy also pushing against it with his hands. Whatever it is, we have to... D whatever it is we have to do, we'll be in there, I bet. Look around the wall, it's completely flat and entirely unremarkable, but there are consoles on the sides. Seems you could fit cards in there. I guess this is where we put those key cards then. I think the bomb is in here, but these nine slots are just to free it. It's a very precise guess. You sure you're not involved with any of this? Avarisha averted her gaze, turning her head to the side as if she didn't want to answer this. No, don't be stupid now. If I organised something like this, I wouldn't put myself in danger. But you are a teacher in this school, right? You didn't look surprised to see your surroundings. You must be familiar with this place, much like the others, and I all were. Tristidia smoothly deflected the topic onto another one. I guess. I think we were in Wing A before. This is probably the school we all go to. Since you're so knowledgeable about it, you're almost definitely a teacher here too. Okay, okay. Any other topic? She still wasn't happy with the current one. Ever since her introduction, it was clear she didn't like being reminded of her more advanced age. I've been wondering, how did you even get into my emptiness? As far as I know, only students were allowed by Pandora. Tristidia is the one with the online list. He most likely knows a lot about my emptiness. Maybe he's the one I have to look for. The one that needs to be killed. Did you use your position as teacher as leverage? Are you asking because you want to know my crime? The horse theme guy brushed the back of his head with his hand, not knowing how to tackle the question. You're sharp. Well, maybe it wasn't that thickly veiled anyway. But I have two reasons for that, so listen to me before thinking badly of me. I just don't know who to vote for yet. I mean, there's Cora. She's suspicious, but that's just because of her nickname. Everyone has the name of a deadly sin in Latin, but Pandora is Greek, and so is Ancora. It means anchor, or hope, I guess, in a more figurative sense. Hope, huh? Yeah, that's exactly it. And the other reason is... I honestly don't care. Could you turn around for a moment? Tresidia stared at her in, a, in surprise due to the sharp change in topic. You're not going to stab me in the back, are you? <laughs> no, I just want to see something I figured out earlier. Tresidia gave in to the demand and turned around. I wouldn't do that. Avarisha could see the back of his helmet. It had the same cool S that the Mii cards were plastered with. Interesting. I knew I noticed something when walking with the others before. I don't think anybody else pointed it out or noticed it yet. What is it? On the back of your helmets is a symbol. It's a weird S. I'm sure you've seen it before, haven't you? The one on the cards. Oh, that? Is that why you wanted to look at the back of my helmet? I've seen it drawn in random locations in the school, yeah. Actually, it's not only in this school. It's in every school. For some reason, all over the world. The symbols started being drawn by kids that had nothing to do with each other. What does it mean, you think? Normally, she's more annoyed than this. Does she find this topic interesting? I don't know. Honestly, I think everyone's wrong about it. Some people think it has ties to a superhero, but the symbol looks nothing like it. Others think it's a company's logo, but again, no ties. So it's completely unexplained. I've never really paid any mind to it. I thought it was just a graffiti people were drawing everywhere. There's got to be a reason. Anyway, let's keep searching. We can talk about it with the others later. Since it's clearly related to our helmets. The two of them let the middle cylinder, left the middle cylinder. Instead, Avarisha looked at the debris scattered around the middle area of the crossroads. A lot of destruction here, isn't there? Do you know what happened here? Yeah. Don't you? The boy shook his head. Avarisha slumped her shoulders when she realised she had to talk about it now even though she she clearly didn't care. A bomb went off and destroyed all of Wing B with the cafeteria not long ago. A second one collapsed Wing C. Reminder, that's the wing with the gymnasium. So the school closed for a while and that's how there's no one around here now. Still, whoever kidnapped us really went in hard. They repaired so many walls and put in all these plates. And what of Wing D? Destroyed as well. The only one still standing is Wing A, because the bomb meant for it never went off. That's why I'm thinking the bomb's here with us. 
I don't think anyone ever had classes in Wing D. What even was there anyway? Honestly, I don't even know. I've never gone there. Ugh. This is starting to grate me now. Someone blew up the school and now we're stuck here. Can we move on? Their assessment is more or less correct. The only wing still standing is Wing A. And I guess the crossroads is still standing too. Avarisha reached into a small hole in the debris to drag out a me card. She said something, but the signal grew weak right at that moment. All of a sudden frequency switched, interrupting the feed, which cut and restored to Ankura's helmet. Okay. Well, it seems like it's... Okay, it's definitely time to wrap this up. We have to wrap this one up now, but we will be back soon enough. Till then, if you guys enjoyed it, thanks for watching, thanks for taking it out with me, and I'll see you in the next one.